Hi and welcome to the playing with full spectrum photography video. Uh, we've got a mirrorless DSLR. We're going to be shooting lots of video indoors, outdoors with different filters, different lighting, and different light sources. So uh, stay tuned, have fun. I've got an index here. Jump around to whatever suits you and please like and subscribe. Hi, Phoenix Rising here. And today we're going to be playing with full spectrum photography. So if you're interested in full spectrum, infrared photography, ultraviolet photography, we're going to have some really cool stuff uh, to give you an idea of what it's all about and what you can do with it. So that being said, you'll notice we've got a couple cameras, we've got some flashlights, we've got some filters all laid out. So let's go over what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Okay. Uh, this video is going to have basically four sections. Uh, section 1, the intro, which we're doing right now. Section 2 is going to be a primer on full spectrum photography. And we're going to talk about frequencies of light, where breakpoints are, what you can do to modify stuff. Just kind of kind of ties everything together. Uh, then we're going to go and we're going to do studio type of uh, imaging. And we're going to put different materials on the table. We're going to use different filters, different illuminators, as well as different lighting, meaning we're going to use uh, incandescent lighting, uh, we're going to use LED lighting, fluorescent lighting, and even some candle lighting, uh, because full spectrum, all the stuff really takes on a whole new meaning. So we're going to play with all those indoors, then we're going to go, going to go outside and shoot some outdoor scenery and things, uh, full spectrum, uh, again, because the world will take on a whole different look, and we'll be using different filters while we're going through these processes, so it'll allow you to really get a real good feel for what this is all about. So that's what we're going to do. Now how we're going to do it. Uh, what I have here is two Nikon 1 cameras, a Nikon 1J1 that's not been modified, just a regular photography camera. And for those that aren't aware, this is a 10 megapixel, 1 inch CMOS sensor mirrorless DSLR. Okay. And I also have a Nikon 1J5, which is the last version of the Nikon 1 produced. This is a 21 megapixel, 1 inch sensor mirrorless Nikon DSLR. The difference is this 1J5 has been modified for full spectrum photography. And what that really entails is it is all your cameras have a built-in filter that basically blocks the sensor from being able to see into the ultraviolet range and into the IR range. Uh, because we want our images to look like what we can see, not what the sensor is capable of. Uh, what, they, what you do with a full spectrum camera is you remove that piece of glass, this optical filter, and you replace it with a piece of uh, like glass, like same optical qualities, but no filtering on it to allow this camera to basically take in all the frequencies of light it's capable of seeing. Okay, so that's a full spectrum. Now, we're not going to be taking pictures because that would be kind of boring in a video to watch somebody just taking pictures. Instead, what we're going to do is I have a test rig where I can mount both of these cameras right next to each other and then I can shoot video. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take both of these cameras, we're going to limit their ISO to the, the same level, and we're going to take 1080p 30 frame per second video in standard and in full spectrum and play with all of this stuff in the meantime. And then we can do split screen, picture in picture, side by side, uh, switch back and forth, whatever, to actually really, really bring all this stuff home and together. Okay? Apples to apples. So that's the plan. Uh, we'll talk real briefly about the filters and the uh, lighting and illuminators. Uh, I've got incandescent lighting in this room, I've got fluorescent lighting, LED lighting, and I've got a couple candles, so we'll be doing all of those in a studio comparison. Then I've got uh, filters to block different frequencies of light, five of those, and I've got four illuminators. So we'll do the illuminators next because we've already talked about illumination. I've got two UV illuminators, a 395 nanometer illuminator, which puts out a lot of visible light, but also black light, as we call it, that uh, makes anything that's fluorescent fluoresce. Uh, this falls into the visual range. That's an ultraviolet illuminator. Second ultraviolet illuminator is a 365 nanometer, which falls deeper into the UV range. And this one also has a blocking filter to block visible light on the front of it to where it's 
virtually invisible to the naked eye or close to that, but still puts out a lot of UV. So, uh, two different UV light sources. Then we have two infrared illuminators. Uh, yep, that one's still on. Uh, first, we have an 850 nanometer. This is a standard night vision illuminator. 850 is pretty normal. Now, this illuminator, while I can't see the beam it's putting out, if you shine it at somebody at 100 yards and focus the beam, uh, even to a couple hundred yards, they'll be able to see this red light. It'll be a deep red light and they'll say, what the hell is that, right? Uh, so it does put out a little bit of visible light, but primarily all of its lights in the infrared range, okay? Uh, so we'll be using that as an illuminator. Uh, then we have another uh, IR illuminator. This is a 950 nanometer illuminator. This is deeper into the infrared spectrum. And even close up, you can, it's almost imperceptible that this thing's on, so you kind of got to squint and look and say, I think it's on. Uh, so this is virtually invisible, even somebody being beamed with it 100 yards away, it totally invisible. It throws out a good beam for night vision, but not visible to the naked eye. Uh, so we're going to be playing with all four of these illuminators too, and that's going to allow us to do straight infrared and ultraviolet. Now I don't have any filters that allow just ultraviolet photography. Uh, I've got some stuff on the way that I might be able to make work, but that's kind of a hard nut to crack there. But uh, well, what I do have is I have five filters. <coughs> Otherwise, I have one that blocks ultraviolet, which uh, basically converts this to a visible light and IR camera. I've got three filters that are infrared pass. Uh, one of them, this one is a 650 nanometer. This allows very deep reds into the camera and infrared. Uh, I have a 720 and a 950 nanometer. The 720 basically blocks all visible and UV and starts emitting light right about where the human vision capability ends as far as uh, going into the reds. So it's a true IR. Then we have an IR 950 that uh, blocks even part of the invisible IR deeper into the range and carries on from there. So we've got three IR pass filters, one UV, and lastly, a bandpass that's going to allow us to block ultraviolet and infrared, much like the original filter that was in the camera. But it's not going to be exactly right because Nikon built a filter to be explicitly for this camera, this sensor, and work perfectly with it. This is going to block both UV and IR, but it's not going to be exactly the same. And we'll see how well it does compare. Does it really make this thing usable back like a regular camera, or is it going to really throw everything wacky? We'll see with that too. So there you have it. There's all our gear. And stay tuned. Jump ahead. I'll show you times if you want to go to the different comparisons. Or keep watching and we'll go over a brief primer on light spectrums, ultraviolet, and infrared. I think I got it. Okay, welcome to the dry part of our uh, of our presentation or our video here. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, wildlife in the room. Tail, please watch your tail. Mind your tail. Uh, so here we go. Uh, let's talk about what full spectrum is on a camera, as well as IR and UV, and what the visual ranges we can see. Uh, just so we can start tying all this together. So we're playing with these different filters you can understand what you're looking at aside from, oh yeah, it just makes colors different. Uh, so basically, this line represents uh, a significant portion of the visible and going outside the visible range of lighting as far as frequency or spectrum goes, okay? Uh, the human visual range, well, now all these numbers are in nanometers, which uh, is a thing you'll see a lot when you start looking at night vision and different uh, visible light range stuff. So the human eye can see about 380 nanometers, which is your deepest purples getting into your ultraviolet, all the way up to 720, which is deep reds going into your infrared range. Okay, And these are all approximate numbers. You can look online and you'll find everything kind of has some variables in it, okay? And probably it variables by individual for that matter. So here's the human visual range, okay? Now, when you get your camera, uh, any any camera and you purchase it what's going to have what it's going to have is it's going to have a filter 
in front of the sensor that makes the camera only able to see what you can see because that's what you want. You want your camera to show colors the way they appear to you and be true so they have a complex series of coatings they put on that to be able to uh, reproduce what the naked eye sees. And this filter right here, this is a, basically an IR UV cut filter. This is an aftermarket one that uh, we'll talk about in a little bit, but it basically blocks around 380 and shorter and 720 and longer frequencies uh, from getting to a camera lens, okay? And of course, your camera itself, uh, from what I've researched on the web, uh, CMOS sensors generally can go, and I picked a farther number, some of them say around 300, some say around 250, but they can see down to 250 nanometers and up to about 1,050. Now that's not to say they can see it clearly or that it effectively illuminates a sensor. Uh, the sensitivity at these extremes is limited, but it can see frequency-wise to a, about that range, okay? So, so there you have human visual range versus what a camera with a sensor, a full, full spectrum camera, what it can see. Now, you can also get an IR mod for a camera or a UV mod, and, and basically what those mods are going to do is they're going to put, instead of taking that filter off and putting a, a blank piece of glass in front of it, uh, the sensor, they're going to take one that either blocks visible and IR to make a UV camera, or blocks visible and UV to make an IR camera, and there may even be some other ones that kind of gradiate at different levels uh, within that. So you can get different mods done on your camera. This one's a full spectrum, which to me gives you greater flexibility to play with stuff. Okay, so that's the range. Now let's talk about the different equipment and filters that we're going to be playing with specifically today. Okay, so uh, here we have another 500. This chart goes from about 200 up to about 1100 nanometers. Again, there's our human visual ranges right here. And the camera can pretty much see side to side this whole everything that's on this sheet. So let's talk about our illuminators first. And we'll go with our ultraviolet. So here's our 365 illuminator. And again, uh, very, very little visible light that comes out of this, but it illuminates things that will fluoresce with ultraviolet light. Now, this has a 365 nanometer LED in it, but it also, as you can see, it's got this opaque uh, filter in front of it. So what it does is it, uh, it basically, it's all the light it's putting out, or virtually all of it, is falling outside of what we can see with the naked eye. Uh, and it has this blocking filter to make sure that it's not putting out much light that trickles off into our visual range. So that's our 365 illuminator. Now, we've got our 395 illuminator. And again, that one definitely puts out, you can see, uh, looks white on, uh, on our regular camera. But you can see it, it'll illuminate everything blue, makes fluorescent things fluoresce. Uh, and this light, its peak actually falls within our visual range with ultraviolet coming off uh, outside of what we can see to cause fluorescent things to glow. Next we have our 850 illuminator and as you can see, uh, I'm not sure if this is showing up much, most cameras actually block U or, uh, IR better than they block UV, but uh, this illuminator, the peak of it falls outside our visual spectrum, but uh, you can see with the naked eye a little bit of light coming out of this because it tapers off into our visual range. So it does put out a little bit of visible light, but you can't not you can't see the beam, but you can see the actual LED itself glowing. Then we can go farther into the infrared with a 940 IR illuminator, and I don't know if that's able to show up at all or not. Uh, but it basically does the same thing, carries farther into the IR spectrum. And although this, I'm not showing it tapering off, you can at close range actually see a little bit of light coming off of this chip. So it does put very, very little light into the visual range. But you kind of get the idea on how this stuff is arranged, okay? Now, so that's our four different illuminators, where they're going to come in at on what the camera can see. Now let's talk about our filters. Uh, we talked about the UVIR cut, and I kind of boofed up my little drawing here. Uh, this actually blocks anything from about 380 or so down as well. It doesn't just carry on that way. Then uh, next we get into uh, our UV only cut, which is a standard UV filter you would buy. And basically it allows everything in but blocks 
getting down beyond what we can see in the UV range. And this very effectively blocks this 365 illuminator, but you still get a lot of light, which I would expect, from your 395 illuminator. We've got three other filters that are all designed for infrared work. First we have our IR650, which is 650 nanometer. Now if you can see that the filter appears red, meaning you're, getting, you're able to see light that's reflected through it, right? And that's because this starts at 650. Again, it starts allowing light from the deep reds of our visual range going into infrared, okay? Uh, next, we have our IR720. And this IR720 is really the, the, probably the neat, best break point for playing with infrared photography and getting the most infrared light you can get because it basically starts allowing light at about the edge of our perception of reds. So, uh, I don't know if I could, I don't, I may be able to get just as, I could hold this in front of a light bulb and see just the ever faintest amount of light. So it's basically right here, showing all in, near infrared. And lastly, I've got this other one, this IR950, and this starts well into the infrared from where we stop perceiving. So this is going to give you a different view of the infrared world, but you'll notice you're going to lose a lot. You have a very short amount that you can get into the camera with this filter. So this is going to be much more limited and you're going to need a lot more bright daylight or whatever in order to use this 950 than you would the 720. So there you have it. There's our four illuminators represented on the scale, human visual range, as well as these five different filters that we're going to be putting in front of our full spectrum camera. So you can kind of, if you want, you can refer back to this <coughs> to uh, to be able to see, and I may put some, I may take some pictures and put some slides of this in there just to make it, uh, just, just for reference. So anyway, there you have it. There's our primer on full spectrum, infrared, ultraviolet, all the filters we're going to use, all the illuminators. And uh, now we're ready to set everything up and start actually playing with this full spectrum camera. Okay, let me get down into the camera's view. Okay, here we are. This is our test setup. This is uh, my table, and uh, we're in my office. And what we're going to do is switch lighting types, and then we'll use various filters in front of the full spectrum camera to see how everything works out. So, uh, I guess what we'll do first is we'll just do a quick run through of different lighting examples to see how well the Nikon One uh, J1 regular and the Nikon One J5 full spectrum handles different uh, light. Now right now what we have is we have incandescent lighting just I've got two actually two different styles of incandescent bulbs. One's a regular one and then the other one's an old-timey one that puts off a much more yellow orange light. So as you can see uh, both of these cameras are set to uh, auto white balance. Now I could do a gray I could I could actually tune the full spectrum camera to get a more uh, a more natural looking picture, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let it just run an auto white balance uh, as we go through all this stuff. And uh, you could also do black and white, but now I will say this, if you're shooting raw, which you probably will be if you're going to this level of detail to play with stuff, uh, your raw images are going to be full sensor data. It doesn't matter what you apply, it will not affect the raw information. So uh, in that regard, we're not going to be able to show any of that uh, because we're... Uh, we're shooting movies. So, okay, incandescent lighting with both uh, a white incandescent and a more, much more yellowish incandescent. So here we are with just the, uh, this is a more standard brightness, uh, 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 not quite as warm of an incandescent light bulb. And let me switch over to the old timey. And this is an old timey, you know, real wound fold filament, much more orange light. And you can see the difference between the two in how the cameras respond. Now notice that, uh, that the 1J5, the full spectrum camera, it is having no difficulty getting a lot of light for the picture. And that's largely because of the infrared content of an incandescent bulb. Okay, so now let's go ahead and we'll flip on our fluorescent bulb and 
uh, give you an idea of how that works. So uh, fluorescent, I'm still seeing a brighter image in the, in the full spectrum camera and your colors are off. Now, something else that you can notice a little bit is underneath the green shirt on the right, I actually have a, uh, a cover for a pack of Dirty Bird targets actually behind this shirt. And the reason I put it there is because that's a synthetic material shirt. And what you're going to see as we go through this and tailor and limit the light, synthetic materials tend to be transparent to infrared light. So uh, right now the visible light stopping you from seeing what's underneath. But as we go through this, you'll see some astonishing things when playing with the infrared. So, okay, so there we have it. There's fluorescent. And again, I'm not using any filters yet. We'll get into filters and illuminators in just a bit. So uh, we have fluorescent. We've done incandescent. Now, let's go ahead and turn on the LED lighting, which LED lighting, as you've seen from showing how the illuminators work, they tend to be very, very uh, specific in frequency. They don't put out broadband. Uh, they probably, in most of them, unless they're a UV or an IR LED, they're going to be in a fairly narrow frequency and not put out a lot of extra stuff that uh, that your incandescence or your fluorescence or, 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 or a flame style light will do. So, uh, and this is just one type of LEDs. Actually, let me turn on another LED bulb. I don't know if it's I don't think it's the same manufacturer to see if that really makes much of a difference or not. Uh, in, in color and color depth or color type. So a lot more like of course I have four like 75 watt bulbs in the ceiling and that's just a separate one so but yes it does make a tonal difference uh, much more so on the uh, full spectrum camera. So okay we've gone through four different styles of light so now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all the lights and I get that they might be able to see a little bit because I've got one little LED light over my desk that uh, should be fairly faint. So let's go ahead and play with a couple of illuminators and see just how well these might, uh, how well these, these are going to function. So, okay, first we, you could tell, boy, I turned it on. I'm not even pointing it over there. This is our IR940 illuminator, okay? Look at that. Uh, regular camera cannot see a darn thing. I can't see any difference as I'm shining this across the room. No difference. I'm not seeing anything. Now, of course, going here, I can, I, you can see very bright uh, to the camera that way, but gosh, that's a, that's a 950. And this is three levels of brightness, so let me see if I got it. Whoops. Oh, maybe not. If it is, it's just so bright that it doesn't matter. So. Now, looking at this, that's a 940. You can see what's behind the shirt. And that's seeing through the shirt because it's become transparent to the infrared. Now, I'm going to turn that illuminator off. And I've got to try to find my other one here. Ooh, that's, that's a UV. Oh, here's my other one. This is, now, this is my 850 illuminator. And again, I can't see. Now that's, boy, that's, I got that focused in a really tight beam here. Let me widen this out. So here's the 850 illuminator. And again, a uh, regular camera can't see it, but you can see how you can make out what's, what's right through the fabric because it, the fabric, the dyes are not there. Just to, you just have basically, might as well have a, a trans, semi-transparent mesh like made out of fishing line. So there's our IR and let's just see what, uh, how everything can see. IR from there, and that's the 850. Now, uh, next we'll go to our 395 UV illuminator, and you'll notice UV illuminator is actually providing illumination in both areas. Uh, now, this is 395, so keep in mind this is putting out stuff in the visible spectrum, and because it's putting out ultraviolet light, anything that is fluorescent in nature is also showing up. So, uh, much more so obviously to the full spectrum camera. So let's go out here and go to the back and kind of give a quick take there. Again, uh, 395 UV and the sensitivity to both cameras and how they are responding to it. 
Now, our last illuminator that we have, if I can find where I put it, it's a tiny one. Ah, oh, here it is. Is our 365 illuminator. And now if you'll notice, only, only the black light that is causing anything to glow is showing up. I'm shining it on the walls, which are obviously don't reflect UV very well. Uh, and it's not, uh, so you're not seeing hardly anything. And, uh, but we are getting a fair amount of usable illumination. And I, and I, now I, I can see a little bit. This does put out, still put out some visible light, but not nearly as much with the 365 as the other one. And of course, uh, we'll go there and see if anybody can see it there. Okay, so now there's our four illuminators, okay? Uh, what I'm going to do is, again, I've got one little LED faintly in the background, and this full spectrum camera. Let me see if I cover that up. Oh, good. You know what it is? Okay, the reason you're seeing a little bit on the Nikon 1J5 is I've got, I've got blackout curtains, and they're drawn, and everything else, but there's just a little bit of light coming in, sunlight coming in, and it's not so much the light as I think it is the... Uh, maybe more of the IR spectrum coming. So let's go ahead. Now what we'll do is we're going to turn on our overhead LED lights and we're going to see what uh, we're going to see what these filters do for us, okay? Uh, so what, what, what do you want to start with? What do you think we ought to start with? Well first I guess we'll go ahead and we'll uh, take the UV filter and I'm just going to, I'm not going to screw it onto the onto the full spectrum camera. Just move it across in front. So as you can see our overhead LED lighting very little difference with our UV only filter, okay? UV and IR filter. Uh, yeah, we're getting some color tonal differences. So these LED lights are putting out some near infrared that's being blocked, getting us closer back to uh, what the original is. Now, uh, let's go ahead and see just how much IR light is getting put out. We're going to go with our three separate IR pass filters. Here's our 650 nanometer filter. So as you can see, that's allowing reds and visible IR. So it's blocking UV and most of the visible light, but allowing red spectrum light through. And that's not actually an IR pass filter. It's a, a kind of a, a kind of a go-between sort of deal. Now we're going to go with our 720 and the 720 is blocking uh, all the visible light and just allowing IR. Now when I hold this up, even looking at the overhead lights, if I put it right up to my eye, I can maybe see just a faint glow but can't make anything out. So very effective at blocking all ultraviolet and standard uh, visible light, just IR. Okay, well, now we've got one more and this is our 950, which is deep, uh, deeper into the IR spectrum. And as you can see, we're not putting out enough IR light from our LEDs to get any 950 wavelength or above out of it. So there you go, regular uh, IR lights. Now, or regular, uh, regular LED lights. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the fluorescent light, turn off our overhead, and now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, see uh, what frequencies of light this fluorescence putting out, how these different filters respond. So. Uh, first, let's go ahead and do our UV again. And very little difference, so that fluorescent light's not putting out hardly any ultraviolet, right? Now let's do our UV and IR uh, cut filter to give it more back to the standard. Now if you'll notice, this is a very, very close representation to what we're seeing on the other camera. So this uh, UV IR cut that we have, and I forget what brand this is, if I can uh, see it here, made in Germany. I think it's... Uh, b and w yep b and w which is a pretty good brand of filter in my opinion so yeah that pretty much gives us uh to where it's fairly usable and you could color correct post processing on that okay let's see how much ir or near ir the fluorescent puts out okay fluorescent again this is our 650 filter to where you're seeing reds and ir well, let's go with our 720 filter and now the 720, you can see uh, not much. Actually, the LED lights were putting out more infrared, in, invisible infrared, than the fluorescent is, which is kind of surprising to me. 
and I don't expect to see if it with that result I don't expect to see anything through our 950 and again uh, nothing through the 950 okay so uh, now we've done our non heat producing lights so let's go ahead and we'll do our we will do our uh, we'll do our incandescence with our warm with our uh, normal incandescent and then our warmer incandescent separately rather than just full tilt because I think that's applicable the old timey lights are very orangish in nature and I may have to take a picture of the bulb just so you know what I'm talking about on that so okay old timey light on first we're going to do our UV cut and again not a slight total difference but not much difference on the UV there and now let's do our our uh, IV or IV ugh, our UV IR cut and hey there I am okay uh, and there's there's that cut filter there now with this incandescent you'll notice the colors really don't come out true so that while our UV IR cut worked well for fluorescent didn't work so good for our early uh, incandescent uh, 650 filter we'll do that very quick virtually no difference there uh, which means that this camera is, is the red is very strong in this camera now let's go with our 720 and again not much of a light output difference with our 720 because uh, uh, the you know your incandescent lights are putting out a ton of uh, infrared light and lastly now let's look at our 950 and see what we got and you'll notice with the 950 now with the 950 right we're getting an image means we're putting out a lot of deeper infrared with our incandescent light and look at how well you can see right through that shirt to the uh, target up underneath com compared to even normal so uh, that's that that's pretty remarkable I wasn't quite expecting that nor was I expecting that much deep IR out of our standard incandescent now we're going to switch incandescents and I've got this 60 watt old timey very yellowish uh, very yellowish light bulb uh, and again we'll go back through the sequence one more time here and there we have our UV again no not really much UV out of that which is as expected and now we have our UV IR cut and as you can see that's a very warm orangish aura that it's giving off there now we'll do our 650 and 650 again not much difference there 720 where we're now looking at just infrared and again a ton of infrared really a very subtle difference there so that uh, we're getting a, a very heavy into the infrared from the old tiny bulb and lastly the 950 and oops glad I'm indoors and there's no sharp pointy objects to break my filter on that would kind of put a block on the video so so there you go and uh, that's how much uh, above the 950 spectrum that we're putting out so there you have it there's all the filters through all of those now what I'm going to do is uh, I guess we will do the filters with the illuminators so what I'm going to do is set the illuminators all up and we'll start with our UVs we're just going to set them up on the on our camera mount here so I can rapidly go through our filters now this is our 395 nanometer uh, UV flashlight so here's our UV cut filter now you can see not getting a huge difference so it's like wait a minute at first when I did this earlier before I got the 365 illuminator I thought well this thing's not doing anything okay but we'll see when we get to the other illuminator that it does so here's our other IRUV cut again not much difference there wasn't expecting it uh, now I get my go with the uh, which we'll call it my this is a 650 so I'm getting reds and uh, and and uh, IR and then we're going to go with our 720 and again the, I'm only getting a little bit of visible lights through there so it's not much and that's off of the stuff that's glowing, fluorescing under the ultraviolet. <coughs> okay, so let's go ahead and now we've got our 365 nanometer illuminator up there. And uh, let me go ahead and first we'll use this uh, Polaroid filter. 
to see if it blocks anything out and not really much and now let's go ahead and use the Hoya filter and I'm not seeing uh, very much there now that's kind of interesting because the Hoya actually uh, when putting it in front of the flashlight uh, does make a much bigger difference so and of course here's our UVIR cut filter and as you can see that's cutting uh, we have a lot of IR light emanating in here or maybe not much but some from uh, probably from the window and even though I got blackout curtains and all that so okay now we got our 650 nanometer filter R720 and you can see a lot less light there from the from that 650 uh, or not 650 a lot less light from the uh, 365 okay now what I want to do here is this is kind of interesting because I would expect uh, maybe it's uh, trying to get to a better position with this uh, UV light to maybe get some reflections or something. I don't know. I'm not sure how to go about this because I do. I do. I know. I know there's a difference with the Hoya, and I was kind of surprised actually. I was playing around, waiting between videos. <clears throat> And the Polaroid really doesn't block UV like the Hoya does. So that's a Polaroid. And let's go ahead. And I'm getting a little bit of a difference between the UV and the Polaroid. So let's let's do this. Uh, and it might, I don't know, it might, it's kind of odd because now this is a, let's shine this right up at the cameras and see how this UV blocks there. So. <clears throat> okay, let's go back to pull right now. Goodness, now see now, I'm standing back here behind this, and that UV is a very faint purple light, but it's making your eyeballs light up. You know how black lights kind of weird you out. Now there's the Polaroid. Uh, that's the Polaroid UV fil cut filter, and now let's go ahead and okay, see, and that's the Hoya UV cut filter. So uh, yeah, that. That blocks, uh, really does block UV direct. So what I think what we're seeing here is because this UV light and everything shines differently under UV, but because this 365 UV light is not being reflected from anything in here, there's not much ultraviolet reflection. And maybe this ought to be interesting. Okay, I don't know how blotchy my face looks or weird being illuminated by UV. But there we go. Uh, I've seen UV pictures out in the sunlight uh, from UV only cameras and it's very, very different. So uh, long story short, <coughs> the, uh, the Hoya UV is a good UV filter. It actually does uh, block a lot of UV, but that Polaroid doesn't. And the Polaroid, I, really to be honest, I bought it to use the ring mounts to actually use some of this other UV pass material that I have ordered to try and make some sort of filter so uh, I knew they were pretty much junk in the first place but I was really surprised at the difference between the Hoya and the uh, the Hoya and the Polaroid as far as blocking ultraviolet so uh, when we get outside we're probably going to see a heck of a difference because a lot of UV of course coming from the Sun not so much coming from our other stuff so while I'm sitting here in the dark let's turn this back on and I'm going to pause this and what I'm going to do next is the last round of our indoor testing and that is I'm going to light a couple of candles so we have actually uh, regular uh, candle light to see how how the infrared filters and how much infrared light things like that throw out comparatively so I'm going to go ahead and pause this and we'll come back in a minute with candlelight Okay, we're back, and as you can see, I've got a couple of candles uh, burning, uh, in addition to having some incandescent lighting going here, which is a lot of the red. So let's go ahead, turn out our light, and just work with candlelight. <clears throat> now, mind you, this is, of course, uh, trying to maybe I can turn this off. Okay, there we go. So now, 
Uh, all we have is candlelight going. Now you'll notice our full spectrum camera is like, has no problem seeing with that. It's actually seeing better than I can with the naked eye. Whereas our uh, Nikon one that hasn't been modified is a, has a good, uh, what you would expect for candlelight. Uh, kind of about what we're seeing, only maybe a little darker around the edges. So uh, there you go, candlelight with, without any filters. So let's bounce through these filters again and see what we can see. Okay, we're going to do the Polaroid Ultraviolet. And really not much to say there, not much to write home about. Now let's do the Hoya Alter Ultraviolet. And really not much to say there. And I wouldn't expect much any UV to really be coming off of these cameras. Okay, now here's our UV IR cut filter. Uh, again, trying to go back to normal, uh, normal how the normally normally the camera would look. And if you'll notice, the colors aren't right. So there's really you're never going to get back with a full spectrum camera. You're never going to get back to true colors uh, by using any filtration because once you remove the the stock stock filter off of the sensor uh, you can get maybe something approximating it but not too much so okay now if you'll notice this is our 650 and an up filter and really we're really not losing much light so that's telling us that most of this candle light even though it's uh light in color, uh, a significant amount of the light it's putting out is above 650. Now let's go ahead and go to our 720 filter. And again, wow, uh, lots of infrared being produced. Really not very little difference. And lastly, we have our 950 filter. So let's go ahead and go in front and uh, by the time we get to 950 it appears that much of the light that's being produced is uh, is actually less than that 950 bandwidth so really 950 gets us almost back to the same amount of color saturation that we had with uh, with our regular camera so there you have it uh, there's our full spectrum review indoors looking at different stuff so let's go ahead turn on our lights and uh, what we'll be doing next is we'll be going out and uh, doing doing a review outside in real uh, sunlight, bright sunny day, and seeing how uh, how we get and what these filters do for us. Of course, we won't use any, won't play with the illuminators. We can't, don't need them. But we'll play with the filters and go out to a nice natural surrounding and check these cameras and how they perform there. So, coming up outdoors, yay! Okay, Phoenix Rising here at the Lumber River State Park in Scotland County, North Carolina. Uh, what we're going to do is we're outside, obviously. Uh, we're at the picnic area, which is also adjacent to the Lumber River, so we'll do some shots of the picnic area with the sun at our backs, then some more shaded shot air, uh, shaded uh, video looking at the Lumber River. And of course, it's bright, it's sunny out, beautiful day, and a, a very good opportunity to play with this full spectrum camera when we have an abundance of natural ultraviolet and infrared light. So of course we're going to do the same thing with all of our different filters, uh, see how they perform, what effects they do, and I might even uh, I might even towards the end go ahead and set the camera to like black and white or even do a uh, set it up for a custom white balance just to show those effects because that's the other half of this and, and we really haven't touched on any of those creative aspects. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, take a look and see what we see. Okay, uh, as you can see, we're looking at the picnic area here at the Lumber River State Park. So what we're going to do is, right now, we've got both cameras in operation and unfiltered, no custom uh, white balance, no custom anything, everything just in automatic. So we're going to go ahead and start running through our filters on our full spectrum camera. Okay, first I'm going to use this Polaroid uh, UV filter, Let's see what that does for us. And really, 
uh, Polaroid UV doesn't seem to be doing much, okay? And really, it, we I noticed that you noticed it didn't block a lot of the UV when we were uh, using a UV illuminator. So let's see how our Hoya UV works. And really, you know what? Uh, it appears that the UV isn't uh, isn't really adding so much of a huge amount to this camera because there's the Hoya UV filter, and not much of a difference there. Now let's go ahead and take our IR UV cut filter, which should make this look pretty much normal. And voila, it does. Uh, the colors are a little bit off. I see the colors are a lot warmer than uh, than they actually should be. But uh, that puts you pretty much ballpark back to a regular, regular camera. So uh, there you have that. And now let's... Uh, Take a look at our at our other three filters, uh, our IR filters. So let's first go with our 650 IR filter. Now, as you can see, that uh, blue tones are going away, more reds and uh, and IR. But again, that's still allowing an awful lot of visible light into the scene. So that's that now let's go to IR 720 so this is going to block anything except for IR all the visible light out of the spectrum and uh, as you can see definitely a difference there higher contrast and some color shifting and now lastly let's go with our IR 950 oh wow that's a huge change there but as you can see there's still plenty of uh, IR available where this really cut out everything with our indoor shots on the out uh, outside a ton of longer longer wavelength IR cool okay so let's go ahead we'll turn the camera we'll pause and turn the cameras around take a look at the river and some shaded areas a little bit and see how that goes okay same place only now we're looking at the lumber river uh, a lot more shading going on there. I don't expect to see a huge amount of difference, but let's go ahead and see anyway, right? Okay, here's our Polaroid uh, UV filter. And of course our Hoya UV filter. And I'm not seeing a huge color shift. But again, we're also, remember that we are shooting this and letting auto white balance do its thing on our full spectrum camera. Okay, here's our IR UV cut. And again, pretty much the same sort of results. 650 nanometer IR pass filter. And now we'll go to our IR720, which again, that should be cutting out all ultraviolet and visible light from the picture to where all we're seeing is the infrared light that we normally can't see. And lastly, our 950, which goes even farther into the IR spectrum, uh, blocking parts that are close to the visual range. Okay, so let's go ahead and pan this around. We'll get uh, down here. I'm going to see if I can do this without all my filters sliding off the darn. Uh... Oh, 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 don't go. Oh, don't do it. Hmm, okay. So here we are. I want to zoom in a little bit, try and get a similar, uh, maybe a similar, similar view. Okay. Okay, that looks about right. So, okay, now we're looking at, the, I wanted to kind of look at the water a little bit, and if I want to look at it anymore, I'm going to have to ch find some place to set these filters because they're going to slide right off my uh, my rig here. So let's go ahead, we'll go back again. Polaroid uh, UV cut, or UV filter, which they say UV, but actually all your UV filters are normally a UV cut. And there's our Hoya UV filter.
and our IRUV cut. And again, this is this is a uh, B and W IRUV cut, uh, uh, number 486. And there's other IRUV cut filters out there, so if you get a different filter, uh, might come up will, will obviously probably be a little bit different results. Awesome. Here's our 650 nanometer IR filter. <coughs> Hi, hello. There's our. 720 nanometer IR filter. Whoops, almost dropped it. Okay, and again, going back to the 720. And lastly, we have a 950 nanometer IR filter. So, pretty dramatic differences there. So, I think what we're going to do next is we are going to go and stop recording and I'm going to set this uh, I'm going to set the full spectrum camera to black and white mode and then we'll do the same thing and check these uh, all of these with uh, with the camera in black and white mode and see how the filters uh, help us respond there and uh, once we're done with that we're going to go ahead and I think I'm going to take a custom white do a custom white balance for the full spectrum camera and what that should do is give us some very interesting conceptual colors and then we'll run through all the filters again with a custom white balance uh, to try and have the camera corrected for seeing this full spectrum so let me pause and we'll go ahead and do those okay we're back and uh, as you can see I've got both cameras set to monochrome mode uh, I was going to do color on the regular camera and monochrome on the other, but I thought, well, hell, let's let's actually see what the difference, uh, how black and white looks differently between these two, uh, and with the filters on the on the full spectrum camera. Now, keep in mind, if you're taking pictures, any of this monochrome or custom white balance, uh, the custom white balance, you could. Per I'm, I'm, that setting may be saved with the raw file, but all your other like vivid or monochrome or none of that stuff matters when you take pictures in raw. So uh, all your stuff you're going to have to do in post processing if you are uh, shooting raw. Which if you're going to do this kind of photography, you're probably doing that anyway. So okay, so now we're in monochrome mode on both cameras, and here's our Polaroid IR or UV cut. And now here is our Hoya UV cut. And again, I am not seeing really anything there. I'm kind of surprised. I actually figure you would see a lot greater difference. Okay, now here's our IR UV cut. So basically that's giving us regular spectrum. And now let's go with our 650 nanometer. And, and really, your, your deep red, like your 650, a lot of times, you, when I used to, years ago, shooting black and white film photography, you'd use a red filter to give you a, a to increase your contrast in the scenery. So that's kind of where, you know, the deep reds, that's what generally they were used. Yellow gave you a little bit of a contrast increase, and the reds would give you much more, just incidentally. Okay, let's make sure I got the right one here. Okay, now for our IR720. And lastly, our uh, IR950. Okay, so there you have a uh, monochrome, a little bit of a monochrome demonstration here. I'm going to go ahead and stop, and we'll come back with a custom, uh, custom white balance. Okay, we're back, and what we've done now is we've used a white background uh, in sunlight, not uh, kind of shadowy sunlight, but uh, 
to get an actual custom white balance for this scene on the full spectrum camera. Now, of course, we're still in auto white balance on our uh, non-modified uh, Nikon One. So, so here you have it with a uh, custom white balance. And let's go ahead and go through our filters, and then we'll play around a little bit here. Uh, and I think that might just be uh, enough to wrap it up, aside from just playing with creatively with this. Okay. So, okay, custom white balance. And here's our UV filter, and of course, uh, really, if you're using filters, you would probably want to do your custom white balance through the filter itself, okay? Uh, but in this case, we're not going to do that. We're just going to uh, play around with... Uh, with it as it is, but I just did want to show you the different lighting aspects of using a custom white balance. And you can, if you're shooting raw and just taking pictures, you can you can do an awful lot with your white balance and all that stuff post-processing. And there's our UVIR cut. Holy smokes, wow, that's green. <laughs> that's a very vivid uh, coloring. And this is our UVIR cut. Of course, we just did the Polaroid and the Hoya uh, UV only. Okay, now let's go with our 650 nanometer IR filter. Or, which is allowing, again, that's allowing some visible reds and the IR spectrum. Uh, now let's go full IR with our 720 filter. Okay. And lastly, we have our our IR 950, if I can not drop it in the dirt. Sorry about that. Sorry about the delay and the noise. Okay. Takes the camera a little bit to adjust for the light. And incidentally, uh, uh, with the, uh, I have ISO Auto on, so uh, with this IR 950 on this bright sunny day, my ISO, I'm at, I'm at maximum aperture. And uh, my ISO is, is jumped up to 560, which isn't very high, but still is an increase compared to ISO 180 and F11 uh, versus F5.6. So, and there you have it, the 950. Uh, so, we'll go ahead and we'll pan around a little bit. And this isn't a fluid uh, video pan, uh, tripod that I'm using, so we're just kind of... You know, it's going to be a little not real smooth here. so I can't lose any of these filters. Okay, we're back with our full spectrum camera with the IRUV cut filter, and this is a B&W F-Pro uh, number 486 filter, IRUV cut. Uh, and what we've done is now we've taken a custom white balance with the, the uh, IRUV cut filter in place in front of the camera uh, to get us as close as we can, or at least what the camera thinks is close, to a true uh, white balance. Now, uh, keep in mind, you know, video, you can still post-process to a degree, but uh, if you're taking pictures with this filter in place, you should be able to uh, get pretty close corrections in post-processing, especially uh, in RAW, if you're shooting RAW, uh, because you are changing and getting closer back into just the... Uh, the right spectrum of light coming into the sensor. So, uh, but you will have to do post-processing. And, uh, and if you are shooting without it, there's no way you can really, there's no way to differentiate and get fully back to what a true rendition would be if you're not using an IRUV cut. So, uh, for that purpose, uh, IRUV cuts are good, but, they, but they're, they're not going to replicate the original filter that's on there because it's a very specific piece of glass for a specific sensor, camera model, processing engine, the whole nine yards. And uh, 
any filter manufacturer is just doing their generic, uh, generic brand. And, and, and depending on the brand you get, it could be very different results too, uh, based on their take on where they want to cut off at on your IR and UV and how, and how well their coatings are, that, uh, how effective they are at blocking unwanted light. So there you have it, IR UV custom white balance on a full spectrum camera.